Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon, good afternoon. Bonjour. Dobre deschli, Sofia. And Nicola and Rada and the ladies. Hello. Um, this session is going to be filmed, which is why I'm standing on the podium. Let me know if you can't hear me. So silent means you can hear me, right? <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, this afternoon, it's our pleasure uh, to gather with uh, colleagues and students of International Business Studies in Vlissingen to talk about our study program. Uh, Mrs. Rena Kiley uh, will give you uh, explanations about what the program is about and why you could consider it, depending on your interests. Um, and we also have uh, special guests, and those are people that you may find very interesting because they did the studies uh, uh, international business. And they are Maxence and Roam and Rosalie and Marloes, and they're all graduates from international business. And they're working now, and Rosalie will tell you what she is doing instead of working at the moment. And uh, I'd only like to stress before we start that um, the most important is that you speak with the other students, with the students present here. You want to know what it's really like to study here? Ask the students. I'm being paid by this university, <laughs> okay? It doesn't mean that I'm lying. But I'm a bit older than them, so ask, their, uh, ask about their experiences. Um, they also join our uh, Student for a Day <coughs> program. You can enroll via our website, and we organize for you individual Student for a Day sessions. So you're not with 20 new people sitting in a classroom, but we will receive you individually and make sure that you are introduced to students of our program and that you can spend a day with them, go to their classes, have lunch with them, and see how things are going here. Mm -hmm. I'd like to ask uh, Ms. Skyly to uh, say something about uh, uh, the study program of international business. Thank you. <coughs> Young ladies and gentlemen, I believe I know what you're thinking right now. You're thinking to yourself, when I come here and study IB at HZ, how will I be spending the next four years? And furthermore, why should I come here in the first place? Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Rowena Kiley, and I'm here today to answer those questions for you. But firstly, I'd like to know something about you. Are you a student who likes to learn a lot of languages, language, language, business, and business English? What we call a blue student for the purpose of this presentation. Are you somebody who says, actually, I want business, business, and more business with Business English? Or are you somebody that wants a bit of both worlds? If you are a language, language student, please pick the blue card from the cards in front of you. And if you are a business, business, and more business, <coughs> I can't get enough of business student, please pick the orange card. And if you want a bit of both worlds, Please pick up the green card. Okay, let's see what we've got today. Already somebody who's holding her options open, I can see two cards. Who's got the blue card? Okay, quite a few blue cards. Green cards? All right, uh, you want the best of both worlds. I understand that. And the orange cards? Okay, orange cards, fewer of you. You can always change later, even after the program has actually begun, so don't worry. What does your program look like? Well, let me just go over the outline for you. If you are a blue student, so the language students, those of you that held up the blue cards, you will be doing the IB core curriculum plus business English and two languages. The languages that you can follow are Dutch for non-native speakers, Spanish, French, and German. 
If you are a business, business and more business student, you will be also doing the IB core and business English the same as the others, but you will have two extra business courses. <coughs> and those of you that want the best of both worlds, the green students, the hybrids, you will be doing the IB core curriculum plus business English, one of the four languages, Dutch, French, Spanish or German, and one extra business course. Now, let's look at the curriculum for you. This is very, very complicated, so we're not going to look at this for very long, but I just would like to draw your attention to the fact that you can see that the year is split into four blocks. These four blocks of ten weeks. So the first block and the second block will take us from the end of August until Christmas, and then after Christmas, we have the next two blocks, three and four, and that takes us until uh, June. Um, the other thing that I'll be doing when I simplify this is these courses here, I will not be showing them again. So we'll just be looking at the header company profile or company health check and market research here. Okay, let's go on and break this down for you into more detail so you can see exactly what it is you'll be doing. So for the blue students, the ones that focus on language, you will be doing in the first block, of course, uh, called market research, and there are other courses that support this. And you will be doing business English and your two languages. In the second block, you will be doing company profile and the supporting uh, courses, and this is where we are now, of course, in the second block in November, plus Business English and your two languages. In the third block, Export Plan, and it's the same thing, Business English, two languages, and in the fourth block, the Sustainability courses, Business English and your two languages. And you'll keep your same languages throughout this period. Now, here we have the little thought bubble, the first time it pops up. Why is that here? Why HZ? Because I have written here business English, but actually I could have put business German, business Spanish, business French, because we focus here at this school on the business elements of the language, the communication skills that the students will need when they go out in the third year even, and certainly when they graduate so that they can immediately communicate in the real world of business. Other schools focus more on the general, uh, the general levels of English, the general, sorry, of other languages. They focus on general French, general Spanish, etc. Hybrid students, you've been waiting for this. You can see what you do. Exactly the same courses here for the business core and business English plus your one uh, course for business and your one language, which you will keep for the whole of the first year. Now we come on to the orange students, the business, business and more business uh, students, and you can see again the same courses, the core courses, business English, and in this case, two more um, business courses, and you can see some of the names have come up. Okay, then we come to the second year, and you can see, all right, I've seen this before, this pattern. And it is the same kind of pattern. The blue students focus on these courses, and the orange ones, the top courses, and the green ones in the middle. So it's the same story, so I won't go through it again, and uh, profile by profile. But there is one difference here, and that is student company. You can see this is a whole block, January till June. What is it the students do here? Very interesting. They start their own company. They produce a product, they market it, they sell it, and they wind up the company after five months. As parents, you will notice that your son or daughter will 
call you up more often, uh, come home more often if they're able to, volunteer for tasks at home mar far more often than they ever did in the past. And why is that? Well, they need investors in their companies. And guess what? You are the first people that they're going to come to. So prepare your wallets now and also your tasks, okay? You're forewarned. Second half of the second year. But now you're thinking, okay, curriculum, curriculum, course this, course that. When does the exciting part start? Here you can see year three is completely different. <coughs> In year three, you have a whole semester where you have to study abroad and a whole semester where you have to work abroad. How does this differ over the orange, green and blue, uh, blue profiles? Let me just show you. If you are a business business student and you don't do extra languages, you can actually go anywhere you want for your minor abroad and go anywhere you wish for your work placement. Providing, of course, you follow the, uh, the needs that we have in our program, the uh, courses that you need to take, the credits that you need to get. If you are a green student with one language, you can either do your minor abroad or you can do your work placement abroad in the, lang in the country where they speak the language you are studying. So you could work in France or you could study in France if you are only taking French. Now the language students, you can see here what happens <coughs> is they must spend one semester studying uh, where one of their languages is the native language and the other semester in a country where they speak the other language. So you can either work <coughs> in Germany and study in Spain or work in Argentina and study in Austria, for example, if you have the <coughs> German-Spanish combination. So that's exciting. Let's hear some more about that. Where can you go for your minor? Well, you can go to North America, very popular, both uh, coasts of Canada and the east coast of the United States. South America, Spanish-speaking South America, but also Brazil. Western, Eastern, Central Europe, we have loads of contacts there. And in Asia, very popular, South Korea, China, and Indonesia. And we can also go to Australia. I actually wanted, I actually wanted, do you mind if I answer your question at the end? I actually wanted to put a whole load uh, more stars on here, but my colleagues stopped me. And they said it's very boring for the audience if you just click and say a country and click and say a country. But in actual fact, I could have put 60 stars on here because we have contacts with 60 universities. You've been spared that. <laughs> Where do you work? Well, these are some of the places that our students have been to in the past to work. This is Hong Kong, Milan, France, uh, the east coast of Brazil, Valencia, Belgium, Jakarta, of course, Indonesia, Germany, Malta, Lithuania, and very popular, of course, London. There are a number of other choices we could have put up there, but I just wanted to give you a, a wide range. This is week, uh, year four. And year four, we can see that we recognize already this structure for the first half of year four. But in the second half, we see again that students go out of the country to work. And they can go back to the company they went to in the third year, or they can go on to another company in another country. 
Now what I'd like to do just for a couple of minutes is just show you what is happening now to our first year students. So this is block two. The students have been at school for about 12, 13 weeks. And last week they went to, on the tour of Zeeland and they went, you can see here we are, and they went to these international companies. Here, your surprise in uh, Zeerikzee, uh, close to Boer in Heinkinsand uh, and uh, Dow in Tunisia. Let's see how this fits with our project-based learning. If we look at block two, if we look at block two, we can see that the students who went out to these companies under the company profile course, they have already done all these things. <coughs> and look, a financial analysis. They are participating in a financial analysis of the Dow organization. That's huge. They've only been here about 12, 13 weeks, as I said. This gives us another answer to the question, why HZ? We are so small that we can take our students out almost immediately and give them contact with the real working world. Other universities are not able to do this because they are too big, they have too many students. But while we're on the subject, why HZ? Let's look at these things. Firstly, accommodation here is much cheaper than it is in the rest of the country. Secondly, we have the beach. You know, it's going to be, we in a couple of months' time, we're all going to be rushing to the beach, so this is great. We have, even though we're only a small school, we have a mixture at this point in time. We have 12 different nationalities here. This gives uh, the opportunity for a lot of intercultural competences and teamworks and expectations, <coughs> etc., to be adjusted when working with people from a different culture. And this changes all the time because we don't have a particular relationship with any country, so we get people from all over the world. It's, it's constantly changing the mix of students that we have. And our whole study programme, in our whole study programme, the four years, we have only 300 students. How does this compare with other universities? It's much smaller. What does that mean? That means actually that the students very often do not get to know all the teachers and the teachers, some of the teachers don't even know the names of the students because they never have them throughout the program. Furthermore, the team leader is usually far more remote and doesn't know most of the students' names and certainly nothing about them. Our team leader knows the names of all these 300 students and can tell you something about every one of them. That makes a big difference. And if you need any other reason to come here, our students like us. Look. They put us right up the top of the ranking and we're only two points behind the two universities in front of us. So I think that answers question two. Why come to HZ to study IB? The first question was, what will you be doing? And this is the answer. Two and a half years of this and one and a half of this. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, uh, thank you, Rowena. Thank you for having paid attention. Uh, the test is going to be in two hours' time, so um, now it's not about testing here, it's about learning.
but sometimes we have to verify whether you learn something or not. Well, the best verification, of course, uh, is uh, the proof given by our uh, former students. I, I am thinking about inviting Rosalie first, uh, if you don't mind. Rosalie, uh, you graduated one and a half year ago. Okay. So it is Rosalie. We'll have to keep you for the last. <laughs> Sorry for that. So we can have a chat. Um, uh, I'd like to ask still uh, Maxence and Rowan, are you ready to share uh, some of your working and studying experience with the audience? Thank you. Thank you. Oh, and by the way, uh, Maxence and Rowan will tell you where they work, and you will immediately see the connection with what the students did last week in the tour of Zeeland. everybody this afternoon. Um, I'm here with my lovely colleague to tell you something about uh, our experience with the HZ and uh, how we got into uh, our field of work that we are working at uh, right now, which is your surprise. Yes. Oh, oh it's very it's showing anything, but uh, right. who are can we? this be a bit better? Or well, uh, so who are we? Let us introduce ourselves. Uh, my name, oh, it's actually, we just screwed up. Well, maybe yeah. we can fix this. So sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. It's the uh, so who are we? Well, my name is Rowan. I am uh, 24 years old. I just graduated from the AZ. I'm Dutch. I studied international business with a focus on just business. Uh, the current field I'm working in is affiliate marketing and other interests that I developed during my studies here are online marketing and data analysis. Uh, my name is Maxence Guerrand. I am French. I'm 24 years old. Uh, I graduated this September, and I was also uh, Hazard Student Ambassadors. Um, I studied uh, the international business with the focus on the business, and now I work in sales with uh, relationship with businesses, and my focus on the selling process and the customer journey of my clients uh, from businesses. Yes, so how did, uh, in this part, in this whole journey, the, how did HZ contribute to uh, yeah, our business, uh, the business minded way that we're doing stuff now? Um, so I picked up three things that I thought were really uh, yeah, supporting my development as a business student, as a, yeah, as a business minded person. Um, those three things were very important to me. So gaining experience through in internships and going abroad, this was not only good for my self-development, uh, by going to Spain and Sevilla and uh, going to Munich in Germany, I really developed myself as a person, but also uh, yeah, being in a different culture, different environment, also being in a business environment, this really helped developing uh, yeah, <coughs> myself in the uh, field of work that I really liked and that really enjoyed, so I also if you do the study, I encourage you guys to choose a, a good internship as well that you really like. Uh, also, what I did was following elective courses. So next to your courses that you're already following, you could also choose uh, ones that you like and that you would really like to develop yourself in more. Uh, as I mentioned, I did this in online marketing and uh, data analysis, and this is something I'm also using in my uh, field of work right now. And also developing a business mindset. So. This is something that you really learn during the four years uh, at the HZ. So not only uh, learning how to do models, uh, how, how to apply models, but you also really uh, develop your business mindset. So yeah, later on in your field of work, you're really uh, gonna have uh, yeah, a lot of uh, advantage of this. So as uh, Albert Einstein once said, education is what remains after one 
has forgotten what one has learned at school. You're probably not gonna remember everything, but especially uh, having a business mindset is something that's gonna help you in the future as well. And that's something that you develop here at the HZ. And for myself, I wanted to focus on three points that I use from the HZ and now I um, use uh, every day now. It's the group project. So at HZ in the International Business Program, every class has a group project. So you are mixed with uh, all the students. Sometimes you have to choose your uh, team members, but sometimes you don't. So you might recognize yourself in one of the three uh, team members here. And you develop um, skills in uh, meeting deadlines time management, and also sometimes the leadership skills, because if you are the one who does 99% of the work, then you have to lead your whole team uh, to uh, hand in the report and get the grades. So this is something very important that I learned at Hazed and I use now uh, every day in my job. I also um, wanted to highlight the fact that we uh, live and study in an international environment. So in the classes, you will be with other uh, people from different countries, also Dutch students, so it's very nice to have that mix of cultures um, because you don't communicate to the same, uh, the same way to a German person or a Chinese student. And the last uh, point is, uh, has that prepared us for the business world, really, with, uh, we have a great business English course, we uh, learn how to make a presentation, um, and also we have the cross-cultural management class, so we learn uh, the different cultures and how we communicate with them and how we uh, do business. And the last uh, point I wanted to highlight was the uh, student company class where you learn how to create your company for real. So you find a product, an idea, you develop it, you market your idea, your product, and you have to sell it. You also have to do the financial uh, part of it. So it's a whole package um, to prepare you for uh, after graduation. <coughs> Yeah, so what does the company that we work for, Your Surprise, do? Uh, we sell uh, and we produce personalized gifts. So anything that you can think of to give your, to your mother, to your girlfriend, to your boyfriend, anyone, is something that we produce and is something that we personalize to make it just a bit special. So a couple of uh, examples here is the mug with a photo on it, but also the notebook with a name, or especially uh, popular amongst companies, is the products with logos. This is just a way to make it more special, to make it a bit more per personal, and uh, yeah, the giving part is really important at your surprise. Uh, some facts and figures about the company. So it was founded in 2005, and it all started, started with a personalized birthday song. And right now we do everything in the house. So we try to be very innovative. We try to do all the customer service, all the IT. <coughs> we, have, we have everything in house. Uh, so this is also really important for us and for the culture, and that's why we already have 180 employees, which uh, and we're still counting and new people coming. And online, you can find more than 2,000 gifts to personalize. So from the mug that we talk about engraving glasses, everything you can think of, you can find it online. We um, produce it the same day. So if you order before four uh, in the afternoon, it will be produced and shipped. Everything from uh, Zidexe. And we also um, work with brands and characters, so we like Coca-Cola, Milka, Cote d'Or, um, a lot of brands where we uh, personalize their products, so we bring the, um, the competences of personalizing and they bring their brand. So where are we active right now? Because we have studied international business and we're working at a company in ZXC, uh, which is a Dutch company. But we are also active internationally, especially for, uh, throughout the whole of Europe. So we have 21 different uh, websites with different languages. And we in recently, in 2019, we launched uh, six new countries, which have been Ireland, Iceland, Slovakia, Hungary, Czech Republic, and also Portugal. So we're expanding our business internationally uh, and try to yeah, really grow our uh, business as well. Uh, so yeah, what do we do right now? So now that we finished, uh, and we graduated from the HZ, what are we doing right now? So I myself, as I already mentioned, am in the field of uh, affiliate marketing. So I'm an affiliate marketeer. My core responsibilities are increasing brand awareness and sales through uh, collaborations with ex external websites. And other responsibilities that I have are creating influencer marketing campaigns to also grow sales and grow uh, brand awareness for your surprise. Uh, and the international business aspects from the HZ that really that we can see in your surprise that we are working right now is the international working environment. So we have 
a lot of different uh, people from different backgrounds, different cultures working at your surprise and we work with them on a daily basis. And also contact, uh, that's something for me, especially I have contact with account managers uh, throughout the whole of Europe on a daily basis. So I email them, I call with them, sometimes I go to their offices and also analyzing business trends and setting up campaigns uh, through yeah, more than 12 uh, countries. Uh, this is something that I'm doing on a daily basis as well. And for me, I am a junior B2B marketeer for the French markets. So my main uh, goal and responsibility is to reach the um, revenue for uh, the French speaking markets so France, but also Belgium, Luxembourg and Switzerland. So I'm in charge of um, selling gifts to companies. So closing deals with uh, business orders. I also have to take care of the French web shops for companies. So making sure we have the right products at the right time uh, of the year uh, to sell the, the personalized product. And also I have to develop some business relationships with partners and brands. As I mentioned before, um, sometimes other companies sell our personalized products and they sell to customers or we uh, sell the branded product. And the business aspects from the hazard that I use every day is of course the international environment a lot with different nationalities. Um, so communication, group projects, uh, and presentation, and also important part, the analytical uh, side. So because I have to reach my targets, I need to make calculations, the margin, the percentages. So this is a whole package uh, from the Hazard International Program that I use uh, every day. Thank you very much for your, your attention, and we are uh, here after the presentation if you have more questions. Thank you. <laughs> How proud we are uh, to uh, have our uh, former students. You look at what they're doing now. How many years ago do you think they graduated? Three years. An actual fact. Uh, Where is he gone? Rohan. Oh yes. Yeah, I was looking at your back. <laughs> Rohan's just uh, catching up with uh, Malouche. Uh, Rohan, you graduated half a year ago. Maxans one and a half year ago. Yeah. And now we have another student for you who also, well, former student, of course, a, a young professional who also graduated one and a half year ago. And it is Malus. Yes, I should stay on the podium. This is your space, right? Oh, thanks. And Malus is going to uh, explain to you what she's currently doing and why and how. All right, good morning again. Um, as I already mentioned, my name is Marlouse de Graaf. And about a year and a half ago, on the 13th of June, I did not only celebrate my 21st birthday, but it's also when I officially graduated from International Business and Languages. Side note, it was on a Wednesday, and in the Monday of the same week, I heard that I was officially hired at Royal Prince in Ningemansa. Um, bit of a background story. Um, by the way, I wanted to take this opportunity to talk about what my education has meant for my current job and what I'm currently doing. Um, yeah, Royal Prince in Ningemansa, what is it? It's basically a muscle and oyster farm. We've been existing for over 100 years, and some years ago, we received the royal warrant. And what am I doing there? Actually, I am in the heart of the company. It's where everything comes together. Because account support is where the client places their order. And my main responsibility is to make sure everything comes right from the moment the client places the order till the moment the client receives the order. And you can imagine a lot of parties are involved such as production, quality department, logistics, finances, and so on. So that's basically what, what I'm doing. Um, there I'm responsible for all the clients abroad. So I've got clients in Denmark, England, Germany, France, Belgium, because there are some French speaking customers there, uh, Hong Kong, Japan, um, you name it, I've got clients there. Yeah, and now what did I learn here that I'm using every day? Well, before we go further into that, I want you guys to imagine that we are at a job interview. I've had quite some over the past year. And um, you, are, you want the same position as that I'm currently having. So a job that's <coughs> international, you're communicating with people from all over the world. And every single person should be or is part of your competition here. And you've got to find a way to make yourself different from the person sitting next to you. And I found mine. 
because I, said, because I started, studied international business and languages. Because what I've learned is that the languages were really a big part of making me different from the others. And yes, it might sound a bit boring learning languages, but trust me, I am no longer afraid when people say during job interviews, yeah, you mind speaking a bit French? Sure, go ahead, no problem. French people calling me, don't worry, I'll take care of the call. Um, and that's something that I never, ever expected when I walked in here, when I started studying. Prin, um, Prince and Ingemans gave me the opportunity to expand on my languages, and that was all based upon the base that I created here, thanks to some amazing teachers. They were very patient with me because French was definitely not my best class. Um, and though I'm not paid to say this, but it's really how it happened. And um, that base and that confidence that I got here, also through the personal contact, I remember one of my first tests from French. I didn't pass it. Um, so my teacher said, Marlouz, just come back during your lunch break and we'll look it over. We'll see what you did wrong. And during the reset, I passed it. And that's only one of the few examples um, that I would say helped me getting that confidence. And of course, they made me go abroad uh, during the third year. I don't think it would have been something <coughs> I would have done if I wasn't forced to, but now I can only look back and be very thankful and glad that it's something that I've done. Um, that was it, and um, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to come to me after this presentation. Great. Thank you so much. Not only French, but also German, ladies and gentlemen, about uh, Prince Dingemans is about to lose her, because what will you be doing next, Marlous? You've already been hired for the next job, right? Yeah, at Dow Chemicals. At Dow Chemicals, ladies and gentlemen, if you are from here, you may know Dow Chemicals. Uh, even if you're not from here, you may know them. Now, you can say, you can say okay, Dow Chemicals, mm -hmm. smelly business, mm -hmm. but they're also <coughs> on a sustainable path, which is what we discovered last week, right, with the excursion. And Walus is going to work there in the customer service center. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so if uh, the current students want to have a talk with her about what it is to use your languages in a professional way, please have a talk with her. And now I'd like to introduce uh, you were classmates. Yep. Yes. Yeah, I remember because you have an identical jacket. That's you do. <laughs> Rosalie, can you get on the platform, please? Uh, Rosalie is uh, doing something entirely different. Yeah. So now finally it's my time. So I'm here to help you, to help you out what you're gonna study. Because I remember me sitting here like five years ago having to decide what to study. So uh, Rowena already told you like the um, information, what you have to do, the theory, but I will tell you what you can do afterwards and during the study. So what is mostly interesting to you, I guess. So what I've done, I first had to study two years, like to get the theory was a li little bit boring for me, but okay, you have to do it, so I just suggest to you to do it. Because after that, you can do the fun stuff, you can go abroad. So I went to Murcia, a Spanish city <laughs> in the south of Spain, and I went to this beautiful university, <laughs> it's a Catholic university called UCAM. And I had the time of my life. I did a minor in tourism and had the chance to do all my courses in Spanish. And I made also a lot of Spanish friends. So these were my classmates, we had a lot of beers together and I didn't lack any party. So if you like to party, it's also a good opportunity. Um, but <coughs> in spite of the party, I also developed myself really well uh, on a personal uh, aspect but also professionally um, and I made a lot of new friends which I'm still in contact with uh, nowadays um, then I went to the beautiful city Nice in the south of France to do an internship at a company um, called oh I didn't mention the company here uh, Eurodev it's a um, company in European development for uh, North American <coughs> companies and um, also in Nice, I had the chance to meet a lot of really nice people getting international contacts, which you can see on this picture. I signed myself up with ESN, that stands for uh, Erasmus Student Network, and this gave me the chance to meet a lot of, lot of really nice people to hang out with, to do fun activities. I did jet ski, I went to other cities, I saw a lot of friends, and I'm also still in touch with some of them nowadays. 
So then, exactly, I had to go back to the school again, back to Vlissingen after being a year abroad, studying again. But I could pre prepare myself for uh, an internship. And this time I chose to do my internship in Utrecht. And uh, I did it at the company PepsiCo. It's famous for the brands um, Doritos, Lay's, Quaker, Pepsi, as is in the name. And it was really fun. I learned a lot. I did an internship in e-commerce, uh, which stands for online sales, basically. Learned a lot as well. Have written my thesis. Met new friends again. And afterward, yeah, you can see me here at PepsiCo. By the way, I got a lot of free chips. That was also very nice. And uh, last year, I was graduated. So I thought, what am I go going to do now? I didn't know. I went to so many new adventures. And I didn't know what to do. So I went to DHL and I worked there at the offers at, as a um, yeah, customer uh, representative for business to business consumers or clients. And I did that for a year and I was thinking, am I going to do this for the rest of my life now? Having gotten all these experiences and knowing so much, I was like, no, I'm not ready to, for this. I'm still young, I have to study. So I went to Utrecht University I still stayed in Utrecht because it's a really nice city. And I started to uh, study intercultural communication. Why did I study this? Because international business and languages is a really nice basis uh, for developing yourself. But I had the need to develop myself a little bit more on a social cultural uh, basis. So I chose to do the study. And I can imagine intercultural communication raises some questions. What is this? What can you do with it? So I here have a definition and uh, I will explain a little bit to you. In intercultural communication occurs when there is a communication breakdown in interaction involving non-native speakers. People tend to attribute difficulties in communication to inadequate linguistic abilities of non-native speakers part. However, sometimes it's not a linguistic ability, but a lack of knowledge of how the system works that leads to the undesirable outcome of interaction. This means that having interaction with other uh, interna yeah, international people or nationalities doesn't mean that language is the part where it doesn't work. It can also mean that you don't have the right knowledge about this person's culture or you don't know about their habits or norms and values. So I'm learning about this. I'm doing a pre-master this year and I hope to do my master next year. And afterward, I hope my story will be continued because what I like to learn to you right now is to always keep developing yourself and be open to new adventures. So you become like a educated person and you have new opportunities. So that's my story. <laughs> In actual fact, more than 20% of our students continue their studies doing a master, and that ranges from finance and accounting to intercultural communication, quite often after a year's work, uh, during which you form your opinion about what you really like to do later, when you grow up. Okay. Um, Maxence showed us a very interesting picture about teamwork. Do you remember it? <laughs> It was, so there was one person doing 99% of the work and we had the other three characters. Do you remember? Oh, no. I uh, see Ayub is smiling yeah. and the thing is we're maybe not all born leaders but thanks to a few different classes you will learn the tip, the tricks to uh, at least work in a team and pick up your part. We're not just throwing you in the deep. We're going to be there with you, try to give you training, try to give you feedback. Uh, when you have a born leader already, like Julia here, or Anouk is also, I think, a, the, that kind of character, right? Uh, you know that when you're young, you can also learn to step back. It's difficult. If you keep on doing what you're already doing, then at a certain point in time, maybe you get to burnout. Okay, just people of my generation know, know about that, uh, probably. Uh, we also want to, uh, to show our students they don't always have to be in the lead. 
They can learn to rely on other people. Okay, even if sometimes you have to make a concession to quality or deadlines. Hey, it's different conceptions of deadlines, the intercultural communication. Right? What is a deadline, Rosalie? Well, it depends where, where you are from, right? Is it oh, yesterday? Yeah. Or if you're Spanish, it can be mañana, you know? Oh, yeah. Are, <laughs> are there Spanish people in the room? <laughs> <laughs> well, we do have a Spanish-speaking person in the room, ladies and gentlemen, and I'd like to introduce uh, you to uh, two students, uh, one business student and one non-business student. If you can come up uh, to the platform. Um, this is to demonstrate that also outside of classes you can learn and you can do a lot um, and especially something for the current generation and maybe you come this way I think this is where we should be right yep. um, can you introduce yourselves yes. hi uh, my name is Nadia I am from Peru I am a fourth year international student uh, international business student and we are part of the green office why is the green office well we are a community of students here in the university that tries to inspire and help other students um, by engaging them with other activities, sustainable activities, and how they can link these projects with their careers. For example, uh, they were talking about the student company in the second year, in the second semester. I did that, and it was one of the greatest experience, actually, because uh, my group and I, we created this um, amazing <coughs> product, which it was sustainable, and we started to look for other markets and their desires and what, what they were looking for. And we realized this really, not niche market, but really this uh, sustainable need of products um, in, 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 in the company. So that's why we created this and we started to sell it and it was amazing. And well, what I wanted to say with this is that Green Office really cares about uh, how we can green the university and how we can all, this new generation, us, really link <coughs> this in the next businesses that we want to make, perhaps in the future, or that we want to work also for. Um, Christopher will explain you how you can link more these projects. Yes, uh, I'm a data management student actually in my fourth year right now. And I'm doing my thesis with the Green Office uh, together with them. We are co cooperating. Mm -hmm. And how Nadja already uh, told you, this is a community of students, the Green Office. And we aim for uh, providing for the students a platform to, for them, uh, um, facilitate the maybe sustainable ideas they might have or ideas for the university to improve on sustainability, for example. And we already have some success with this because uh, we had students coming to us uh, um, with, with ideas for projects that have already been implemented. For example, we already had a sustainable fashion show here at the university where we only use sustainable materials to provide, uh, design and uh, create the outfits actually. Uh, we have a, pro a project that is uh, concerned about the food options in the cafeteria here. We try to get more sustainable food sourcing. We try to get vegeta vegetarian options on the menu more and push this. We have another project that is concerned about the uh, waste separation, not only at the university, this is about recycling, but also at uh, student housing facilities, for example. We try to push sustainability and recycling in that regard. And uh, there's another project, uh, just another example, that is really uh, successful. Uh, we meet up with uh, voluntary students uh, almost every week to facilitate a cleanup. Uh, we go to the beach in Flissing or at the surroundings of the university. We try to uh, pick up the litter and just have this as a social event for students from all kinds of studies. They can join and have a good time with like-minded people, basically. And with this, actually, my uh, thesis ties to this. So, uh, Raik Waterstad asked uh, us to monitor the trash that we might pick up at the beaches. So right now I'm, I'm doing a research uh, thesis with the Green Office where we test different methods for volunteers to help gather scientific data on the waste uh, distribution on the coast, for example, here. And um, I feel this is a good opportunity for the future also to have cooperations with different organizations in sustainable actions, for example. So uh, we're open for all study programs, so it doesn't matter what kind of study program you might choose. If you want to uh, study at this university, you're always welcome to just uh, step by the Green Office if you have sustainable ideas or you just want to help us out. Thank you. Great. We try to be a university where everybody feels welcome. 
we try to uh, not just be involved in business, like making money. Of course, you want to earn a living later, uh, maybe even already now. Business is more. It's about how to work together, how to create good things together. And international is also much more than coming from different countries. You've heard our students. International is also a much more, it's about being intercultural. And it is also a huge part of our uh, training uh, and of the study program of international business. Thank you very much for being here. Ask all the questions you want to ask. Marina, there was a question you would come back to, right? Yes. Yes. You want to get on the podium and answer it? Watch it. I hope I can answer it. Okay. Let's give it a somebody try. Somebody had a question. Somebody, had yep. a somebody left their hand. Yes. yes. With, me, um, with, the stars, uh, with the stars on the world map, I noticed there were not any in Africa. Um, like, and they said that you, know, you guys had 16 universities um, that were not on the thing. But were, are there any like places in Africa? That we, can go? we don't have. We have students going there for uh, work placement. Uh, currently, there's uh, a pro project in Gambia is uh, starting for graduating students after uh, January. Uh, we don't have partnerships yet with African universities. It's it's because uh, our international office, office lays contact with universities that have programs that are more or less similar to our programs, so you can easily exchange. Because we also need to uh, to make sure that what you do there is not like you sort of like pissing off is uh, what you do there is uh, also recognized uh, as part of your full study program. <coughs> and we do regret, indeed, that we do not yet have partners in, uh, in Africa. Uh, but that's something that I hope we will be able to solve. But I don't foresee it in the, next coming, the coming next years. Thank you.